and welcome to KTN Weekend at One. My name is Edith Kimani. Revolt, public fury and backlash continue to eclipse President Uhuru Kenyatta's appointment of 26 parastatal chiefs. Rebellion is brewing within the presidential alliance over the choice of his men and women, with Jubilee parliamentarians calling for a reversal of the appointment of 26 appointees. Now, the president has picked a total of 13 poll losers, rewarding them for their loyalty to Jubilee Alliance. The appointment of Ambassador Francis Mudaura as chairman of the Lamu Port South Sudan Ethiopia Transport Corridor Project, Lapset, is causing more heat with Jubilee MPs saying the president is choking on his digital platform campaign pledges, instead uh, backtracking into analog tendencies. Mudaura had done his bit and is retired home instead of now getting new young blood in line with the Jubilee thinking where we need young blood, young people, digital to run this country. I'm told he's appointed Mudaura to be the head of Chairman Sijo Lapsat or something like that. That is not, in my view, correct. It's not in the interest of the youth. The youth of this country have read, many have degrees, many have master's degrees, others are professors who could be given that job. Elders, we, would, we welcome elders like Madaura to be with us, but they should be there in the back room as key advisors, but not active players. Their time in which they were playing is long gone. Chairman of Kenya Cooperative Creameries, we are thinking of modernizing dairy farming in this country, and we bring an old man who has been there. Matu am I? Those are people who should be home. I am sure this country has trained young people who can take over and take this country to the next level. I appeal to His Excellency the President to rethink these appointments. Na jubili ata kwa bunge vijana ni wengi kuliko ata sisi wengine. Na ata ata ndugu furaisi wetu nae tunamuita kijana hama namna gani? Sasa <laughs> Well, away from local matters, let's have a look at what's happening in South Sudan. Thousands of South Sudanese, uh, South Sudanese youths allied to rebel leader Riek Machar are reportedly marching to Boar Town in the state of Jongle. Government sources say Machar's forces are planning to reclaim Boar, which was taken from them by President Kiir's troops. This comes after Machar said that he mistrusts the government's call for ceasefire. The former vice president says he wants proper negotiations before he can call his troops to stand down. At least 1,000 people were killed and more than 120,000 left displaced when Machar and Kir's forces clashed in Juba two weeks ago. Regional leaders on Friday gave Kir and Machar a four-day ultimatum to dialogue or eager countries would step in to quell the fighting. Well, more Kenyans continue to be evacuated from that country and 70 Kenyans arrived yesterday night from South Sudan after days of uh, taking refuge at the UN offices in Juba following an attempted coup that has left hundreds dead. This is the fifth batch of Kenyans to be evacuated by the KDF since President Uhuru ordered the military to help evacuate Kenyans trapped in the country. The government has admitted facing difficulties in evacuating more than 3,000 Kenyans seeking refuge in various UN camps because of the volatile situation in South Sudan. Kenyan citizens who arrived yesterday said they were grateful to be home and thanked the Kenyan government for helping them come back home to safety. Juba is now peaceful, but other areas, there are still some security challenges. I had to walk from the refugee camp to where I took a boat to 15 centimeters, you get like 10 people dead. So actually, there's so many people dead. Tango nizaliwe sijawe sikia punduki, lakini munga amenisaidia. Nimesikia kuingine na nafikiri serikali ya Kenya hatutawai kuwa 
kama huko huko kuna ukabila mwingi ni kama kila mkubwa ako na jeshi yake ndio maana vita iko huko mingi sana Back home, preparations for the Nyaribari Chacha by-elections that will take place tomorrow are in high gear as the Electoral Commission and aspirants place final touches before the vote contest. In contention are eight candidates who are angling to replace Chris Bichange, who lost the seat in a petition. Fred Omulo is on the ground and he'll be giving us updates um, on this via telephone. campaigns the campaign period officially ended yesterday i'm just curious uh what is the iebc and the aspirants up to this morning well the iebc is currently ferrying the material to the challenge center from where it will be dispatched and uh, given to the various presiding officers who will be standing in the various polling stations um, the police are also mobilizing their forces. You know that every polling station, every stream will have two officers manning the place from uh, the start till the end of the process. So the police are currently mobilizing their various officers. We know that they will be joined by admini administration police. Um, and in the and in extreme cases, you probably even have forestry officers coming in to fill in the gap and to assist in the process. So we are currently, we are actually currently heading to the Charming Center. We've been told that uh, the returning officers and uh, I think two commissioners are there. They are already receiving the material from Nairobi and preparing to dispatch it later on today. All right, uh, Omulo, what you're telling me sounds like preparation are continuing uninterrupted by, uh, but Senator Chris Oburi yesterday made claims that yes. there were plans by a section of uh, the Jubilee Alliance to delay results in some of the areas. Has IABC responded to this? The IABC hasn't responded. They had held a media briefing earlier in the day before the, the, or the court briefing and they did not uh, have a chance to respond. We've been trying to reach them, and they are saying they have not received any official complaints so far, so they are just speaking for the campaign gimmick. Similar to today, we are, right now we are just from uh, another media briefing from court, and this time they are saying that uh, the TNA is planning to use the community policing youth to cause violence all night long, tonight, until tomorrow, in uh, Dr. Chris Bisaki's stronghold. Dr. Chris Bisaki is the candidate who is standing on an ODM ticket. We asked them if they've reported the matter to the IEBC or the police, and they say that they are on their way there after the briefing. So as long as the authorities or the responsible people do not receive these complaints, they always treat them as mere campaign gimmicks. Uh, all right, and finally, Omulo, all those claims notwithstanding, what exactly are the voters on the ground saying? We've witnessed a lot of apathy in recent by-elections. Do we expect huge voter turnout tomorrow? Um, in the last by-election in this region, which was Bomachoge, which is also within this county, about a week and a half ago, the turnout was standing at 63%, which was pretty decent, comparing, considering that most by-elections only attract something like 40 to 50 percent right. so there was a good turnout and we are looking at a probably a similar situation because this is the central constituency in Kisi county this is where Kisi town falls within but it has uh, about 58,000 registered voters these will be voting in 110 polling stations scattered across this region it's a combined urban plus rural kind of constituency and uh it's likely that there will be a good turnout comparing with Bomashoge, which is a little bit more rural than here. All right. Thank you very much, Fred Omulo. He is in Kisi County just getting ready for the by-election tomorrow in Nyaribari Chachi to get a new member of parliament. Let's have a look at what's happening in Samburu and residents of Milimani area in that county held demonstrations protesting continuous invasion and destruction of their farms by elephants. This after elephants caused massive destruction of crops in five acre farms in the area yesterday. Residents claim their efforts to fence the farms are futile as the elephants destroy even the fences to get to the farms. 
They said in the past few days the elephants have attacked homes and caused destruction. KWS warden Dominic Kwambua said there has been a huge migration of elephants from Laikipia in search of grazing land. He said KWS officers are already identifying migration paths to help reduce the destruction caused by the jumbos. What is happening is that uh, we are trying to deploy our staff for those uh, particular hotspot areas. Uh, but right now, that uh, Maralal is, is experiencing uh, a hot sort of hot season. Dog uh, Nikanakoba Zimetoka Semu is a forest. Nazina migrate down towards Laikipia, Mahari Watakua Napata Marisho. Well, that's the problem with elephants, isn't it? They're very clever animals. So once they figure out how to take down one fence, that's it. So let's hope KWS intervenes in time. Still in Laikipia, the Senator Gigi Karioki says insecurity in his county is as a result of political differences. The senator who was speaking during the burial of a woman believed to have been killed by Pokot raiders urged residents not to shy away from reporting leaders who fan violence. Karaoke, who, uh, who once served as internal security minister, said that Kenyans should hold the government accountable as many lives continue to be lost in ethnic conflicts and modern-day terrorism. While addressing the mourners, like Kipio West MP Washira Karani, urged the government to act fast in confiscating illegal arms before local residents embarked on what he described as a revenge mission against the perennial killings and cattle wrestling. Other leaders from the county assembly proposed that residents of Laikipia close down all livestock markets until security is restored. <laughs> Hii mama mzee akienda katika Nairobi ama pale pengine kutafuta kazi. Hata akiwa ni mama kama hiyo ameachwa. Mbele yetu inachukuliwa inapelekwa Mbalingo. Mbuzi yetu inachukuliwa inapelekwa Samburu. Sisi tumechoka. Kenya's tourism scene is one that has come under increased pressure over the last few years. But now, the Kenya Tourist Board is working with local hoteliers in tailoring new products that attract tourists. And as Michael Karanja reports, water sports at the coast might just be the remedy needed to get tourists flocking back to the Kenyan coast. For many tourists going to the coast, it has been all about relaxing on the white sandy beaches and soaking up some sunshine. But in an effort of keeping guests active, hoteliers at the coast are now developing activities, getting guests more engaged. Water sports has been a huge hit with guests, with jet skiing, one of those pastimes that they can't get enough of. For just under 5,000 shillings, one can enjoy half an hour setting out into the Indian Ocean on one of the jet skis. For thrill seekers, the feeling can be exhilarating, achieving speeds of 60 kilometers per hour on the wavy ocean. Experts say that hotel bed occupancy can go up by 30% from sports tourism alone. There's so much. It's just that uh, people don't know and uh, people are not uh, pushing for it. People um, are not complementing leisure with sports because ideally right now this is festive season where we have people staying for five days when people stay for five days what do you want them to do you can't have them sleep every day for five days you need to involve them and how do you involve them this is now where it comes into play where you get them to the water but if jet skiing is not your thing why not head out with one of the local fishermen and try your hand at fishing this breaks the rather normal routine of lounging in hotel rooms and gives one a chance to interact with the local community the Kenya Tourist Board has been working with hoteliers at the coast to try and diversify their products on the back of increased competition from other coastal destinations such as Zanzibar and Mauritius. If tapped well, it has the potential of showing up numbers that have been slowly declining. Michael Karanja, KTN. <laughs>
Do you know who the best dressed man of 2013 is according to Esquire magazine? I have the answer for you after this short commercial break. But here's a clue. He doesn't wear jeans, he doesn't wear suits, and his only accessory is a rosary. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Katie and Weekend at One. We're glad you're still watching. Now, Pope Francis has a new honor to add to his resume. Esquire magazine has named him the best dressed man of 2013. Here's a look at some of the styles that helped him win this honor. Move over, Brad Pitt. Step aside, George Clooney. It looks like you have some very serious competition in the style department. Esquire magazine has named Pope Francis the 2013 Best Dressed Man of the Year. Now, the magazine admits this is an unconventional decision, but they point to Pope Francis's very simple style decisions as signaling new hope for the Catholic Church. Take a look at Pope Benedict, the elaborate robes, the golden cross. Esquire magazine says this look oh so last season. Now it's all about Pope Francis with his very simple garments, his iron cross. Pope Francis has been trying to focus the Catholic Church on helping the marginalized, the disenfranchised, the poor. Esquire magazine writes, the Holy Roman Emperor really does have new clothes and they reflect the people's hope. Aaron McLaughlin, CNN, Rome. Well, you know what? I don't know about that, but I don't work for Esquire magazine. It's never too late to find your inner thespian. And you know what? A group of seniors in Ottawa, Canada are living proof of this. Sandra Abma has more. If you want to know what joy looks like, this is it. It's Studio 55, a drama class for the retired and semi-retired, taking place at the Avalon Studios in the Glebe. It's, it's like being a kid again. It's bringing out the performer in me, the fun part of me, uh, the creative part of me. It makes my soul sing and it keeps my blood oxygenated. So there. <laughs> Fire! The last time most of them did anything like this was back in a high school drama class. A few others have dabbled in amateur theater over the years. I decided just on a whim, I saw this advertised in one of the local papers and I thought, what fun would that be? Middle of the week, people my own age. And fun is the word. This class most resembles a primary school recess, but all this play is teaching the real behind the scene prep work actors do to get into character. Boy, it's the youngest seniors group you can ever find, young at heart. Good work. Local actor John Muggleton leads the bi-weekly class. There's no fear. All the exercises we do, whether it's improv or scene work, anything, the warm-ups, everybody jumps in 100%. <laughs> Julie Hughes has just retired after working for 35 years at her job. She says this class is the beginning of a new chapter. It's discovering not a new me, but the me that always was, but hasn't had a chance to express itself. Don Westwood says another product of the classes is friendship. This group's been together, what, I don't know, six weeks, seven weeks, something like that. It's as if we've known each other all our lives, because the inhibitions go out the window. You are upset. Good Lord. Okay. In this encouraging environment, even I want to get in on the act. So and it feels pretty good. That was a great freeze. Not only does it bring out the kid in you, Muggleton says this class has all the right ingredients to keep you feeling young. You're, you're working with dialogue, you're memorizing things, and with improv, you're, you're working with someone else and you don't know what's going to come next, so you're, your mind is racing that way. So you're constantly, constantly active, physically and mentally. There are no illusions about potential movie deals or Broadway stardom in this acting class. Just a sense that they're tapping into something just as rewarding. Right, it's time to wind up this edition of KTN Weekend at One, but not before we give you a did you know fact. Yesterday, a lot of people said to me, yo, you're too hard on your director because he gave us a really boring did you know fact. So today he's given us three boring ones. The first one, did you know a bear has 42 teeth? Come on, Okedi. Did you know an ostrich's eye is bigger than its brain? That's the second one that he gave us. Do you think that's interesting? And the third one he gave us is, did you know most lipsticks contain fish scales? Okay, that one's average. So those are his did you know facts. 
here is mine. Did you know Candy Crush, the game on Facebook that everyone is obsessed with, has more active monthly players than the entire population of Canada? See, that's how you give an interesting did you know fact, okay, Eddie? My name is Edith Kimani. I shall be seeing you next year when I resume. Bonnie Tunya takes over tomorrow. Happy holidays. Be safe. And hopefully we'll see you uh, safe and sound in 2014. Happy New Year.